Action. <laughs> so just introduction first. Yeah. All right. What's up, y'all? I'm Geminel. <laughs> Blessings family. My name is Kika. I'm the co-founder of Gorilla RX Wellness, and I'm so excited to be sitting here with Geminel and going into this blossoming partnership. Absolutely, yes. Mantra Loops and Gorilla RX have joined forces, and I'm so excited for all of the wellness experiences that we'll be bringing to you this mm. spring. <laughs> yes. Well, while we're on intros, um, I just wanted to jump in by kind of talking about how I was introduced to Mantra Loops Volume 1, yes. and then 2 came, and it was just <laughs> super divine. Um, but for me, cannabis and like healing frequencies are like the perfect marriage, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to meditation and grounding in self and being able to have those affirmations. To me, it's something like when I just spark up, especially being in nature and then having those sounds to accompany it, especially from mantra loops, it just comes with so many beautiful affirmations yeah. that you just are able to really tune into a higher sense of self. Ooh vibes um, you said especially yeah. in nature that in feels nature. like such a good vibe <laughs> yeah like I mentioned to you during the pandemic me and my family went to Barbados um and it was when I was first introduced to the music and it felt like if it wasn't reggae if it wasn't like mantra loops if it wasn't something like beautiful chorus you couldn't even hit like the highs that God had already instilled in nature yeah. by listening to like the same things that we would listen to on the radio. Mm -hmm. So I had to mm -hmm. rework all my playlists. It had to be either instru instrumentals or literally pouring into me. Yeah, like something positive, right? Something positive. And it was just like, it hit with the environment. And I was like, oh, this is the way that we're supposed to be downloading into ourselves. Yeah. Like, this is the environments that we're meant to be in. And... From growing up in South Central Los Angeles to then being deep in nature, it just felt like the per the perfect partner, mm -hmm. you know, especially because you have like, I don't know, to me, Mantra Loops Volume 1 came with a lot of like self-affirmation yeah. and then like coming back into, you know, um, the environment where we were just starting to build the dispensary, we were just centering ourselves and our intentions and just, you know, to remain uncompromising, you have to be like fortified mm -hmm. you know and I think music does that what you've created has really poured into me um, <laughs> and I remember saying that the first time that we met like you don't understand but I'm sure <laughs> that there are so many people that feel that way um and then you had mentioned that like Mantra's Volumes 2 you wanted to be able to like dance to it yeah and had a whole nother tone that was just really bright and I would love to like hear from you like what your perspective was on on creating an album yeah yeah well first thank you because I think you know, um, I felt similarly. I was like, yo, I, I love the way music is sounding these days, but when I'm like in that higher state of consciousness and I'm listening to the lyrics, I'm like, these aren't words that I want to repeat to myself, mm -hmm. you know? And so uh, I really saw a need for myself to have something that I could listen to that actually uplifted and encouraged and made me feel better about my state of being and my state of mind. Mm -hmm. And so that's really where Mantra Loops was birthed from. It was from me recognizing that, you know, I had a lot of internal dialogue that maybe was not my own. Maybe some of it was my own, but like it was unchecked and it mm -hmm. wasn't fully formed in a way that was serving me. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where Mantra Loops came from. And I wanted it to feel like a meditation. I wanted it to feel like chanting. I wanted it to feel like kind of like, you know, going back to that indigenous sense of like if repetition mm -hmm. um, and really being like mm -hmm. intentional about what I'm saying mm -hmm. and really have it like pro reprogram the way that I thought about things. Mm -hmm. But when I was thinking about who I really am as an artist and a musician, I'm like, I like to have fun. I like yes. to dance. I like to, I like to be in the studio and like, yeah, like this is amazing and mm -hmm. hear like all of the instrumentation. And, and so when I was thinking about Mantra Loops volume two, I was like, what are some messages that I currently need to embody and like what's the best way to get me to embody them and it's like it's through movement you know mm. so that's really where Mantra Loops Volume 2 inspiration came from and like the mantras I feel like like you said like Mantra Loops Volume 1 was like really speaking to self it was mm. like a, a internal dialogue really yes Yes. And um, Mantra Loops Volume 2 is like, these are things that I can always aspire. Mm -hmm. I can always aspire to be luminous. I can always aspire to move freely. I can mm -hmm. always aspire to feel like I'm more than enough. And mm -hmm. I think 
like there are days that I'm going to need these messages to yes. remind me, you yes. know what I mean? And they come, they're right there with you. Exactly. You just said something really key, like the word repetition. Yeah. Right. And I feel like it's more than just a title. I would love to hear like more of your intentionality with like the loops part mm, of it. Yeah. Cause it feels, I said this to you the other day, like it feels <laughs> like the songs go forever in the most positive way where yeah. like when you think about a Stevie Wonder or a Motown or, or like these artists who are just creating in their living rooms and in these beautiful environments, the songs are riding out. They yeah. let it ride yeah. and you do that. Yeah. So I'd be curious to hear like <laughs> your perspective on that. Yeah. Well, it started because I play a loop pedal. Uh, so gotcha. I like do like a uh, vocal looping and and so like the mantras were all originally created inside of my loop, my looper. And so that's where I kind of came up with that idea. Mantra gotcha. loops was like to put it into a looper and to mm -hmm. like have it go on a loop. Um, mm -hmm. But then I was like, you know, the simplicity and the simplicity of like the truth. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like it's just the truth. Like these mm -hmm. statements are truths. Like it can be looped over and over again. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can just be like repeated and said over and over again. And then I think what's beautiful about the way it all unfolded, like we were thinking about like, oh, what what could the, you know, the the logo be or how can we like articulate this vision? And um, the, the two O's are the infinity sign, right? right. And um, I just love how like divine, like sometimes you get these downloads, but you don't really know what yes. they're for until yes. like they start to show up. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the divine just kept showing me like, mm -hmm they're a loop because they come back around at you. And like, I think the one that I specifically remember the most is like, my energy is infinite. Yeah. And I was like, I told everybody I'll perform it and be like, I wrote this mantra because I'm tired of saying I'm tired. You know what I mean? And like, people would be like, okay. And then like, and then I'd catch myself with friends and I'd be like, I'm tired. And they'd be like, no, your energy is infinite. And you know, and it was like, it would come back yes, to me and it yes. was because I was putting that energy out and then the energy was coming back to me and then it was recharging me to put mm -hmm. more out and then come back. And it was yes. like, you know, it literally is like this infinite loop. Yeah. Yes. And it's beautiful because then it's like, and now people are in the loop. Like mm -hmm. there is a loop that like, you know, these yes. mantra loopers. <laughs> yes. Yes. I felt that with the first album with I Forgive Myself and I Release. Mm -hmm. And then I, to me, that was such a cleansing song. Yeah. Especially being near the ocean oh. and being able to just like have that moment of like you're speaking to your inner self. Yeah. But then to see the growth you know, in some ways to the second album yep. and like I released to receive. Yeah. It's like a continuation of that same tone, except all right, now I've atoned with it, I've healed it and now I can release. Yeah. And to me I think like that that just reminded me of like true artistry because mm -hmm. I felt that when I listened to like Kendrick Lamar's Damn and it's like you could listen to it from the front or from the back and get completely different meaning. And yeah. there's something when as an artist, you can be a conduit for those messages to flow. And then there's this interconnectivity that mm -hmm. taps in with people on. I'm sure you get like interpretations of the songs where people are saying things that maybe you're like, oh, interesting. Like, yeah. That wasn't yeah. what I thought when I was writing it, but you write too. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because like we say that I was thinking about uh, this one time um, artist Tony Jones. She opens mm -hmm. up uh, Mantra Loops Volume 2. She mm -hmm. and I became friends because of Mantra Loops Volume 1 and the whole affirmation music movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day she was on IG Live and somebody tagged me like, uh, Tony Jones is singing your song. And she uh -huh. was saying, I invite ease and flow. Uh -huh. And she was just singing it. I am by ease and flow. And I was like, I didn't correct her because uh -huh. I was like, that's what she's inviting, right? Yes, and then yes. later on, she messaged me and she was like, why you didn't tell me it was ease, ease and joy? joy? And I was like, girl, because <laughs> I wanted you to invite what yes. you needed to invite yes. into your life. And you invited mm. ease and flow, you know? And it's mm. it's so funny. Like, people will say, like, in, in the songs, like... Um, I release to receive. It says, in order to flow, I've got to set it free. But mm. a lot of people say, in order to grow, I've got to set yes. it free. And it's yes. like, and it's all true, yes, you know? Um, and so mm. there is like an openness and a spaciousness for people to be able to interpret the music the way that they want. But it's, it is like, it is the most simple, it's the most truthful thing is like these statements are just, they're just truths, you mm. know? Um, I really love that. <laughs> I love that because it just becomes a toolkit. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think there are things that pop up in your mind right at that moment when you're about to be out of character and you're like, actually, 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, let me, let me go back to Ooh, the my easy joy. <laughs> you know? Literally. And I yeah. think that's, you know, uh, going back to, you know, plant medicine, I think that that's where that marriage comes in again, because a lot of times, you know, when you're building, especially with the intention of community and others, and you're constantly giving, there's something about just being able to sit back and recalibrate. And what you pour into your spirit at that moment of vulnerability mm -hmm. is so essential. Mm -hmm. So to be able to have those tools to turn to, I feel like, you know, is not you know, there's a side of music that just comes from spirit and, you know, ingenuity and the indigenous, you know, culture, which was the way that I was raised. And then there's a whole nother side to music where that same channeling isn't really meant to nourish you. Yeah. You know? And so I think just to be able to have that balance for people who haven't listened to the albums, like for me, it's just something that I live by. And people are always asking, like, what do you do? How do you have self-care? What's your routine? And, like, this is definitely a very <laughs> crucial part of that vibration. You know? I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I think I think I first noticed the, like, the power of, mm -hmm. like, consumption and music. Like, I have this one memory of, you know, me and my brother. Um, I have a brother that lives out in Los Angeles that also plays music. He's a, he was a trumpet player. He plays mm -hmm. guitar. Like, he taught mm -hmm. me a lot about guitar and, like, music, um, just, like, basics, foundation mm -hmm. stuff. And um, we would jam, and we would consume, we would consume, and we would jam. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day I was like writing this song in my head, like literally just like, just chill, zend out. I'm like sitting on the couch. I'm like in this meditation like state. And there's this song like, that's just like writing itself in my head. Mm. And I was like, yo, I could hear like the whole symphony of it. Like I could feel the whole vibration of it. And then my dad called me and my dad was one of those guys who's super tapped in. Like, yeah. 100% ascended master, you know what I mean? Like that was his energy yes. and he called me and he goes, I really like the song you're writing. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like this is a trip. Like that's, he was like, that's a beautiful song. He's like, keep, like, keep writing it. And I was wow. like, and I just got like real teary eyed wow. and you know, like, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. He just called me, he felt the vibration and it's like, but I was able to get to that state, you yes. know, because I was like, just, I was in a meditative state. Yes. And it was like, you know, the cannabis chilled me down mm -hmm. and like allowed me to just be open and receptive. And like, yeah, there's a beautiful marriage that happens between like cannabis and music is like something so special. <laughs> yes, it is. I think, you know, while we're on the topic of the album, before we jump into the partnership, uh, with Gorilla RX, one of the main things that, you know, has been our rally cry is Black Women Get Us Hired. Yes. And I loved hearing you bring up Tony Jones mm -hmm. and, you know, you have Iman on the album yeah. um, and India Sean, right? Yeah, yep. India yep. Sean. And, yeah. like, just being able to see those powerhouses when you're talking about, like, yeah. at this point in your career being at such a high of your divine feminine. Like, yeah. I would love to hear your perspective on Ooh. how you have the collaborators come together. Wow. And then I love that you, you mentioned the divine feminine, too, because, you know, I'm at the peak of it being pregnant, like very pregnant during the, the creation of the process, like creation process. And I think that was like the moment where I was like, I am the creator, like I am the creator, which is like such a cool feeling to be like, I create life and yes. I create music and like uh, they're the same, you know, yes. they're like. I had these two babies that were birth birthed in the same year, mm. you know, um, and it was just such a special experience, I think, because leading like before I even got pregnant, I was in this particular state of being like, you know, I was like, I really want to collaborate with more people, but I didn't know how to go about it. Mantra Loops Volume 1 was a solo, almost completely solo mission, you know, mm. it was like. I did the vocal looping, I was beatboxing on it, I wrote the, the lyrics, and like, I, it was me on a loop, you know? And I think that that was an important mission because I wanted people to know that no matter what they're going through, they had what they needed internally to work it out. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was intentional, you know? But with this project, it's like, in order for us to get free, there is a sense of community that needs to be involved. Like, in order for us to to like really expand into our luminosity like there needs to be someone to receive the light and to shine the light on and to you know reciprocate that light when we're feeling dim you know mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. i had just been feeling like i really want um 
wanted to collaborate and didn't know how to go about it. But I put that intention out in the universe. Mm -hmm. And then I think I went to I went to yoga with India Shan mm -hmm. and she was like, so what's up with Mantra Lose Volume 2? Like, can I can I be a part of it? And I was like, oh, India, Sean. Like, oh my gosh. Like, yes, of course. Like, let me write something for you. Like, I had no idea what I was going to have her on. Mm. And um, I actually wrote I Release to Receive with her in mind. Mm. And then she was like, I don't know. It's not really resonating. What else do you got? Mm -hmm. And then um, when when she came into the studio with me and um, we we talked about I am free, she was like, I'm actually leaving a situation right now that's mm -hmm. leaving me feeling free. So she's like, this is mm -hmm. divine timing, you know. And then even with Iman, it was like I sat down with Iman and um, I was like, you know, this is this is what I have in mind. What do you have in mind? And she said, I want it to be a prayer, an mm -hmm. alignment prayer. And I was like, that's beautiful. Yes, absolutely. And then she said, you know, she came, she wrote it. And then a couple weeks later, she came and recorded it. Mm -hmm. And um, she was like, I can't even begin to tell you, like, this alignment prayer literally cleared the way. Like, the things that I said mm -hmm. that I wanted from this prayer, like, they started to show themselves, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, yes. that's the power of the intentionality. That's the power of the music. Like, mm -hmm. it's like this energy that you feel. And it's like, it is always on time. Mm -hmm. And it's always in alignment, you know, and I and I think that's what's so beautiful about like the whole mantra loops experience. But, um, you know, I wanted to open the project with Tony Jones, because when I think about affirmation music, I feel like she's really the one who is like, I'm going to like claim this as a genre and maybe no one's doing it yet, but it doesn't matter. This is what I'm doing, you know, and I think all of the artists that I wrote with, we all do it in a way. We all affirm the space, you know, mm -hmm. we all kind of like speak life into our music and into our communities and we show up in that way. But Tony really set the tone for this affirmation space. And I'm so grateful for that because it's like, oh, I fit into this space of music mm -hmm. where it's like, no person has really gone yet, you yes. know? Yeah. Maybe maybe Indie RE, if Indie RE would have claimed a, a genre, like there that, she would yeah. be an affirmation music, you know? Yes, Indie <laughs> RE and Lauren Hill, I feel yep. like we're two yep. of those pioneers where you're like, okay. Yeah, I, like we can yeah. breathe life into mm -hmm. our music. And talk about the imperfections while bre breathing life into them, yes. right? Yep. It's like there's an acknowledgement and you're kind of going straight through it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where a lot of people get stuck, right? Yeah. It's because you're hitting these walls and you don't, you're looking for the tools, you're praying about it, but there's something about being able to like almost soothe yourself, yes. you know? Yes. And I think that like that just goes back, you know, I come from you know, Christian household on the one hand with my great grandmother and then um, my grandmother, who is also our matriarch, um, comes from more of a Rastafarian background. That's so cool. I got the <laughs> what a cool blend. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you, you get a little bit of everything, but then you just become even more attuned to the universal power. Right? Yeah. And I think one thing that has always stood out was just that knowing of like you have the power of life and death in your tongue. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about affirmations and mantras, what happens when you repeat it? Yeah, you know what I yep. mean. I think we're used to saying something once. You're either commanding something, you're yeah. trying to control something, or you're you're voicing. But what happens when you're turning that energy back inward mm -hmm. and you're repeating it to the point that you begin to embody it? Yeah, right? yeah, and um, and that's so powerful too because, like, I used to write affirmations on my mirror or like sticky notes, but then once I leave that space, mm -hmm. like I've left those affirmations yes. there. And it's like almost a dependency to come back to them and mm -hmm. like, what did I write on my mirror this morning? Yes, like, yes. okay, I wrote it in my journal, but like, do I believe it? Am I saying it? And I think what's what's so powerful about music is that sometimes you don't even realize you're repeating these things, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes you don't even know. Um, it, you're singing it along, you know, and mm -hmm. you don't even realize like, oh, I'm, I've been saying I am proud of who I am. Like, I don't know. I probably say I am proud of who I am in that song like 30 times. Yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> you know? So you're like, I am proud. <laughs> yeah. And you're just listening to it and you're like bopping around with it because it's got a nice little groove to it. And yeah. you don't even realize that you're like, you're telling yourself I'm proud of who I am. Like mm. think about just, just on a cellular level, like what that does to the body, you know? Mm. And it's so special. And I, I and I just love the black women get us higher because I always think about like all of our important movements are led by black women like 
you know, Black Lives Matter is a big one led by black women. And it's like, you know, they, we do take each other higher. We do uplift one another. We do, yes, sis our way mm -hmm. into feeling better about ourselves and Absolutely. like, you know, and, and about each other. And I think it's just so, so powerful. Yeah. So powerful. I love that. <laughs> well, I think, you know, that's a great segue into, you know, the text blossoming. Yeah. Um, because I think as we're talking about mantras, I think it's also like, there's one thing to use the album as a tool, but how do we get to a point where we know how to actually write our own affirmations mm, or mantras? Yeah. And I think that's a beautiful part of our partnership is like, once you text and subscribe, you're actually getting some daily affirmations and tools where, you know, you're able to actually put it into real action. So I'd love to hear your, your take on that. Yeah, so when I think about blossoming, I think about um, all of the things that it takes for a plant to blossom, right? It mm. takes nutrient dense soil, it takes water, it takes air, it takes sun. Um, we we need all of those things too. We need a nutrient dense environment um, in order to thrive and to expand our roots and to grow. Uh, we need to be, you know, watering the things that are important to us. We need to take deep breaths and chill and relax and like understand that rest is product like productive as well. And um, and we also need to take in the sun sunlight, whether it's light from you know the sun or light from somebody else or light energy you know mm -hmm. what i mean like it's all important in order for us to grow and so i created um a weekly text challenge that will go around tending to your soil mm -hmm. making sure that you water your dreams mm -hmm. taking a moment to just understand and breathe into yourself that it's okay that you don't have to be rushing all the time mm -hmm. to get something done or to bloom even yes. like mm -hmm. you were already made with everything you need mm -hmm. so you don't have to like do extra you mm. know what i mean <laughs> like yes. you can Fact. chill and then and then also like allow yourself to shine because i think yeah. we're in a particular state of the world where you know humility is like a big thing but almost to a fault like humility to a fault where people are so humble they can't take praise mm. um or receive praise or they can't you know, they don't necessarily feel like they want to shine bright because they're afraid that that's going to take away from someone else's light. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to encourage everyone that it's okay to shine bright because you don't know who you're shining bright for. Mm -hmm. You don't know what impact you're going to have by being your brightest self. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to encourage people to, you know, yeah, be humble, sure, but like also shine bright. You know, yes. it's okay to do both. Um, and I, and I want more people to shine bright and feel comfortable doing that because mm -hmm. there's something so special about being able to shine light on others when you're shining at your brightest self, you know, mm, it's inspiring. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. So speaking of which, I think, you know, one thing that has been so fluid between us in this partnership is the priority of community. Mm -hmm. And I loved seeing even just the jam sessions yeah. that were a part of creating the album, um, but now we get to have our own jam yes, session, which yes. is very exciting. <laughs> um, so I would just love to hear from you. Like, you know, you've you've packaged this incredible portal. And then, you know, you have vessels like Kinfolk, which mm -hmm. you guys have, like, just the ability to welcome folks to be able to cipher and yes. join the music. Um, but what was important for you in terms of this album um, of being able to actually share it face to face with people? What, what were you yeah. kind of looking to do with that? Mm, what's important to me about this? I haven't really thought about this. <laughs> I think I think for me, when I think about Mantra Loops Volume 2, uh, I wanted it to be consumable on all levels, whether you're ready for affirmation music or not. Like I wanted you to be able to find a vibe in it that you enjoyed, whether it's the instrumentation or whether it's the features. It doesn't have to be me, you know, but I wanted folks to be able to take in this medicine music without having to feel like they're taking in medicine music, if mm. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so like I, I noticed with Mantra Loops Volume 1, there was a very specific demographic that was attracted to that project. And it's a beautiful, amazing demographic that I wasn't sure existed or was mm. ready for the music. Mm. But with Mantra Loops Volume 2, I really wanted to open up the floor and be like, hey, you maybe are not in a conscious state yet, or you don't, you know, hang out with like, 
the Lizzie Jeffs and the Tony Joneses and the stay relevance, you know, <laughs> but there is a space for you to enjoy and appreciate this type of music and this type of language to speak over your life. And so mm -hmm. it's really an invitation for all people to kind of be a part of this movement mm -hmm. that kind of feels a little exclusive right now. Like whenever I step into mm -hmm. the conscious space, I'm like, I see the same people, you know, yes. and it's a beautiful community. Yes, it is. And but there's like there's so many more people who want to be a part of that community, but don't necessarily feel like there's an invitation for them. Yes. Um, yes. And so this project is an invitation for all to come and join and be a part of this, you know, more conscious, high vibrational space. That's so um, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, for uh, me and my mom, a gorilla RX, like, we think about, you know, Gorilla RX almost as like this beacon, mm -hmm. right? Like a, the positioning as like a destination and where we are on Crenshaw, where we both grew up. Um, we're very intentional about like, how do we share more with the community? And that doesn't always have to come from like sharing on a personal front. Yeah. But how are we, you know, giving over some of these tools or opening these doors to be able to have mm -hmm. the, these invitational moments to like look at things differently yeah. right because you know we know what it's like to be able to consume cannabis but it's something completely different when we have our elders who are coming in with aches and pains in their joints mm -hmm. and different things like that and they're looking for healing right? yeah and so when you have people within your community who are looking to be healed and yet we're in food deserts you know right. the music that's circulating isn't always positive right um it's like how do we re-engineer and and hopefully be of service in that deprogramming mm -hmm. right and not deprogramming from a culture cultural perspective but from starting within our mindset yeah um, and within our bodies and i think that's the last thing you know, that we have the luxury of prioritizing when we're in a space of survival. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, to be able to bring um, a live performance yes. into the dispensary yeah. is going to be, you know, incredible because I always say like that energy that's left on that floor is what you feel when you Oh walk yeah, in, for sure. Know? Yeah. Oh, that's going to so, be so to nice. to charge that up, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I, I know that people who come the following day or who are there that night are, are going to be able to carry that forward. Yeah. And I think, again, to just be able to give little cues, like when you're ready, this is a tool. You know, mm -hmm. when what if you pair it with this? And, and just to be able to walk in such a way that is ultimately contagious. Yeah. You know I mean? Which is really exciting. Oh. Yes. So we're going to start <laughs> with um, Geminelle performing live in store this Saturday, yes. which is very exciting. Um, and then that'll be followed up by the Kinfolk Cypher. I would love if you could tell a little bit more about, yeah. you know, the origins of Kinfolk. Oh, man. So Kinfolk is, was started by my husband, Dom, um, and is really created as a creative kickback, as a space for the creatives to come and to meet one another and to create community. I think one thing, like uh, when we first moved to Los Angeles, we were trying to figure out where everybody was kicking it at, you know, and... Um, there's a lot of things that are happening in bar settings or club settings, which I think is cool, but it's not for everybody. And, you know, on the sense and the level of like being in a high vibrational space, that's not always the case. And so I feel Kinfolk is very special because it is open air. It is uh, an opportunity for creatives to convene and to connect with one another and to really dance and to really party and to have space, but also to have these conversations. And every Kinfolk is rooted in, um, you know, Dom gives a speech at, at every kinfolk. It's always rooted in a specific topic. So the last one was to grow together um, and to to connect with somebody so that, you know, we don't always have to be working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like maybe we could be working together. Maybe we could be working for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so that was the one that, you know, was really rooted in that. And I think that for this for this particular one, I think a cipher is so appropriate because it just it kind of connects that that element of um, communal cannabis consumption, but mm -hmm. also this element of like, the mic is also open. Mm -hmm. and the mic there's, is hot. Yeah, the mic is hot, <laughs> is open, and there's an opportunity for us to play and create together. Mm -hmm. um, and I love what happens in that like synergistic, like creative space, you know, mm -hmm. when it's like, it's just open and people can join in and, you know, fill the vibe. Um, and so Mr. 14th and DK the Punisher, both of our DJs for Kinfolk, they're also 
fire producers. And so they are going to be bringing some beats for us to to vibe out to and to right. hop on. So all vocalists, instrumentalists, y'all are all open to come and join. Um, I would love to hear like what somebody does like on a djembe to a yes. high beat or like coming <laughs> at their guitar licks or whatever. You don't know. Yeah. Like that could create like the next platinum hit. Like mm -hmm. it's one of those situations where yeah. it's going to be a vibe. So yeah, that's, I'm excited about that. <laughs> that's so beautiful. I love that you said the word kickback too, because that's what it feels like. Yeah. Like when I was coming up, like uh, right over in Lamert Park, Ben Caldwell ha had a space called um, Chaos. Mm -hmm. And so in the Chaos Network, it was always open to the youth to be able to do and program, especially from a musical sense. And so there was like a, a moment that was called Bananas mm -hmm. and everybody <laughs> would go and that's where you would hear like a young Kendrick or, you know, what was happening and what the the youth buzz was right. in the area, you that's know, cool. and, and over time that's changed. Um, and then there's just this gap where people are like, we're all ultra talented and we're all having these micro sessions, but what are we doing to come together and where is that space, yeah. you know? And so for us to be able to co-curate that, um, to join in on something that you guys have already beautifully created um, is going to be really special. So I yeah. hope to see you guys there. Yeah, Kim, man, Kim Folk is such a vibe. Yes. And, you know, Dom and I, um, we've known each other for 23 years, 24 years this year. And, um, and what's cool about that is like we used to be at each other's kickbacks when we were kids. You know what I mean? Like all up in each other's backyards, <laughs> like you having little mm. dance circles and things mm. like that. Um, you know, or just kicking back at Dom's house playing video games mm. with like all the homies in one tiny little room. We're all in there. Yes. Um, and so like it feels so natural for us to create these spaces because we've been doing that for so many years. Our families have been doing it and now we're doing it as a family which is so beautiful, um, you know, and I'm excited to be in co-creation with your family. And mm -hmm. I think it's just, yeah, just such, such a special Unity. experience. <laughs> yes. Um, and then as far as the culmination of the program, I'm very excited. You know, um, we've done some really impactful 420 celebrations in the past. And for us, again, it's always just about how do we destigmatize the plant? How do we go back to the origin and its roots? Um, and also pair it with the things that it naturally is symbiotic with. Mm -hmm. So uh, last year we worked with artist Joel Hamm on doing a gallery exhibit and we had a live band that was outside and it was just really beautiful to be able to have people dance to live music yes. in our community hosted at Bricks and Wood. Shout out to y'all. <laughs> um, and then the year before we did like a full on blowout. So we were at the Plant Chica, which is yeah, maybe we met there. No, no, we, we met, we met Malcolm's Empress. thing. Okay, yep. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, I, that was another coming together that was super natural. And, um, yes. you know, we were able to be in a greenhouse setting and had all the brands come together with everything from massage to tooth gems. So this year, That's amazing. I'm very excited to um, be able to, you know, lock arms on and infuse sound healing. Yes. I would love to like, you know, get your oh, take on so what folks can anticipate. Yeah. So whenever I, whenever I do a sound healing, um, you know, I really invite people to show up authentically in the space. Like you don't have to just lay out and just like listen to the music. Like if you feel like moving, you feel like stretching, dancing, you need to cry, whatever it is that you need to do. Like I invite people to really be open in that space. And um, we incorporate uh, some music production along with the singing bowls and affirmations and invite people to recite those affirmations with each other and, you know, as a group. And I feel like it's always just such a really beautiful space because, um, you know, Sometimes people have never said these affirmations out loud to mm -hmm. themselves, you know, or in the space where there are other people around, like, don't really say those things out loud. And so I think it's a really beautiful invitation of vulnerability, but also just authenticity and showing up as you are. And, um, and it's always been a really good experience to have everybody in the kind of like sound vibration space mm -hmm. together. Um, I've never done an infused sound healing, so this is exciting. <laughs> yeah, so maybe everybody's going to be very free up. Yeah, so that's very exciting. yeah, very open. Um, yes, yeah, so please make sure you tapped in um, on all of the post notifications. Turn those on because you don't want to miss these moments. And also, you can text Blossoming to 619 928 4143. 
for weekly text updates um, and challenges on how you can blossom this spring. All right. See you there. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> I don't know if that was a full 15, but... That was like 32. 32. <laughs> nice. I have a tendency, like, if 